All right, it looks like everything is ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, boys and girls, everybody, and welcome to SAYA here at Lead that Frankfurt Motor Show. On behalf of our communications team and the marketing team members, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us here and to be here with us and in a special occasion, the world premiere of the new Leon ST. My name is Antonio Valdivieso and I currently deal with brand and product communications. Right for me, it's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you the novelties of the new Leon ST. This car is about design and this car is about technology. This is a nice combination of a beautiful design the design that represent the car represent the SEAT brand values and an extraordinary performance functionality and technology. So, um, on this occasion, to talk about the car that is not a name, uh, it, it's, it's uh, Leon is not a name anymore that represents only one car, but it has become a real family. The Leon ST together with the five-door version and the SC, the three-door version. Now the three of them are a family. And for us, it's a uh, special occasion because of that, because the name Leon does not stand for a car anymore. It is the Leon among the states, and it's the family. So as I mentioned before, this car is about technology. This car is about design. And for that, today, we have with us our director of design, Alejandro Mesonero, and our technical project manager, Dr. Michael Hintz. They will walk you through the main things on design and the main things on technology. And for that, we have prepared a short presentation, right? Each one of them will talk to you about the design and, and technical particularities of a uh, particular sort of the uh, car. And after that, you will have the opportunity to ask your questions and, and, and see your comments. And for that, we have uh, we have not chosen a standard alphabetical order uh, like we normally do. So we have done a little draw, an internal draw, and I will assign a number to each one of you. At the same time, I will say hello to Eduardo from Italy with the number one. We'll start the uh, the Q and A uh, round after Mr. Alejandro Mesonero uh, finishes his speech. Then will come Rui from Portugal with number th two, Scott with the number three from the UK, number four, Jan for Germ from Germany, number five, Carlos from Spain, Moritz from Germany as well, number six, and finally, last but not least, Giuseppe from Spain. Then after that, Michael Hinz will do a, a short introduction of what his uh, yeah, important, important role, role. let's say, yeah? Yeah. and then we'll do it the other way around. That means Giuseppe will start, Moritz will follow, Carlos, Jan, Scott, and Rui, and finally, Eduardo will finish the uh, Q&A session. So, once again, a pleasure for me to be here with you. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn within the next minutes. And Alejandro, I'd like to pass the microphone to you. Thanks for being with us as well today. And please, go ahead. Good. Thank you very, Thank you very much, Antonio. And um, good morning to everyone. Um, welcome to our SEAT stand. Uh, I would like to go uh, with you through uh, through the new Leon ST, our latest uh, release from the family, from the Leon family. As you know, we had uh, already presented three door uh, Leon, the SC, the five door, and then this is the third car of the family is the station wagon. You can uh, appreciate uh, in the images the, uh, the front end of the, of the new Leon ST, which shares the face with the rest of the family. It's a face, uh, you know it now very well because it's on the, on the roads everywhere. It's a face that inspires, that reflects character. We believe that uh, a car has to, be, has to have a strong character, it has to have emotion, it has to have this um, a strength of the person that knows what he wants, especially around the, the eyes, what we consider the eyes of the car, which is the headlamps. And then uh, we have been concentrating very much to give this expression of uh, self-confidence, of um, good technology in, a, let's say, wrapped in a nice, in a nice good design. So it's an excellent face, the face, the new face of, of SEAT. 
and then the novelty is actually on the rear. So if you come with me, I'd like to show you what we have done on this uh, new Leon ST. Basically, you know, when we started the project, we were asked, and this was the challenge, how to make a family car to look good, to do to look seducing. Because normally, you know, family cars or station wagons, they've been maybe um, they've been designed, or people think that uh, they are a little bit boring there for the family. You have to make a compromise. You can have a you can have a very ni a nice a nice car when you buy an ST, an station wagon. And then the challenge was to make something that looked really good. What have what have we done? Uh, basically, what we have done from the B post towards the rear, it's everything new. We really work on the proportions of the car to make it look sporty, to have a good stance. Then we have done a slooping roof towards the rear to give a speed to the vehicle, a really good angle on the rear, not too vertical, not too inclined, because it has to be practical. This is very important. And then we have the right amount of rear overhang on the rear. Not too much, not too little. Then again, the name of the game was to keep a good level of uh, practicality with a, nice, with a nice design that is emotional and that uh, will attract people. As you can see also, we have emphasized the sheet metal around, around the, uh, the wheeler to make the car to look really well seated on the wheels. So it has a muscle. It's not flat. It has shape all around. All the lines on the rear, they are quite tight. As you can see, precise. This is the kind of line that we have all around the car. Very precise, very sharp, very visible. We have also, this time, a line that is not in the 5 door or in the SC to actually reproportion the boot in a better way since the loading height it's lower than on the 5 door. It's lower because in a, in a family car, in a station wagon, you, you bring in more uh, goods, probably, or more often, or bigger than in a five-door. So always the challenge, then again, was very much to keep the practicality of a station wagon, but allow the client to really get in love with the car in the first time, and then discover that it's also very practical. Actually, we have one of the biggest boots in the segment. I think actually that the most interesting part is going to be your question, so I, I will use uh, the time now to listen to them um, and then try to answer in the best way. So I'm all yours. You can ask me now whatever you, you feel. Good, good, Alejandro. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Then we said we're going to start with Eduardo from uh, Italy. Please uh, go ahead, Eduardo. Okay, hello, everybody. Um, hello, Eduardo. Hello. Hi. My my question. Uh, we know that uh, the design of a vehicle uh, has a specific social meaning. Uh, for example, rounded lines uh, are synonymous with safety, or uh, angular lines uh, are synonymous with uh, aggressiveness. But uh, how much uh, social trends influence the design of a car, and in, in particular of this car? Sorry, so much social? Social meaning, the social um, situation. So in uh, some period, uh, people uh, uh, need uh, safety. In uh, other uh, period, people need uh, sportiveness, uh, aggressiveness. And, and so okay. the designer thinks about this or not? Yes, listen, this is um, part of our job is actually to answer to the people needs. We have to be very open, we have to listen, we like to listen to the people, uh, what they want, what they don't want, and um, when we were designing the STEAM, we actually realized, and on my own experience also, is that sometimes you want to have a, a nice, a nice uh, station wagon because you need a space, not only for the family, but also um, if you want to transport your bicycles or your surf, uh, you need space. So this is a real need of the people. And then comes the fact that um, some of the people, they say, OK, listen, yeah, but um, you know, I really like the sportivity of the fighter, but I need the practicality of that. So how we combine it? And this is the whole, the whole game for us and the challenge and the fun of it, 
to combine, which is not easy because we have you know a lot of practical parameters that we have to keep. Uh, like for instance, the entrance of the boot has to be wide enough to to bring uh, um, good uh, big objects when you go to buy furniture. Because you know, so this is um, all what you have to combine. So the social the social aspect and to think about the people is very important. I consider sometimes designers a little bit like the the people between the the pure technique and also the uh, the client. We make sure that the technique or the technology will make it attractive to people. Okay, Alejandro, yeah. thanks a lot. Let's jump now to Rui from Portugal with number two. Rui, good morning. Good morning. Hello, all of you. Thank you for the invitation. Alejandro, um, you didn't show the panoramic sunroof. I don't know if that car is equipped with yes. it. Can you show the main challenges or the main design features that it has? Actually, uh, you know, obviously the panoramic roof, you get the most of it when you are at the rear. I think it's, um, it's a very important. It's not a specificity of um, station wagons. I think obviously the roof is longer so we can make it bigger. But uh, I think in any car, and on the five door and three door, we have also a panoramic roof. It's, it's really nice to have um, the light, the lightness uh, that offers you a panoramic roof. Um, since this car is uh, maybe more intended to uh, uh, for families to have children at the back, I think it's excellent. They have fun looking at the uh, um, at what's going on in the sky and. It gives you light, it gives you space, it's really, really nice. From the design point of view, there is no any specific constraint to design um, a solar roof, <coughs> a panoramic roof, and it looks really also good from the outside. Okay, thank you. Good. For number three, Scott Fulton from the UK. Good morning, Scott. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Scott. Um, obviously, as, well, as enthusiasts of the brand, we're really excited to see three models of Leon. on it's, it's good that it gives us that choice. Um, interesting question, though. In terms of the model lineup now, do you see this as a replacement for the Altea? Where does that kind of sit in your future plans compared to obviously having the estate now? Uh, you know, the Leon family is a, it's a quite big family already. Uh, we had before a Leon that had to do many jobs at the same time, the three-door, five-door station wagon, so it was, it was quite complex. Now we have a specific use for each uh, body, for each need for the client. We have the three-door, which is quite sporty, the five-door that is also very sporty, but it has more room inside, and then the ST, which to me looks absolutely fantastic in terms of proportions. It looks sporty, it looks capable. What's next? Next you will see this family growing up, of course. Uh, there will be more versions and uh, we will show you this uh, really soon. And then also uh, we believe that we have an Altea that is really a nice car. It's a very nice um, uh, MPV, sporty. It has the values of Seat. The car is still goes very well, sells very well. We're going to continue with it, obviously, because it's nice. And then we are working in several projects uh, or options to replace uh, Altea. Basically, what we have to replace, it's a vehicle that has um, a very nice design, that has a, that has a good practicality inside, and a higher uh, sitting position. So we are working on that, and uh, hopefully you can see things coming in some time. All right. Thank you. Okay, so now we turn to uh, number four, Jan Gleitzmann from Germany. Good morning, Jan. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Jan. Uh, when you were draw drawing the first sketches, New Leon ST, which other design elements, objects had an influence on your work? Um, you know, the, the uh, when Forgetting the inspiration, uh, we don't get or I don't get inspiration particularly for any any object. Okay. It's more um, it's more about the experience you have uh, or the things that you find by by chance in a daily basis uh, uh, activity. So everything that you get, uh, it could be exhibitions, it could be just uh, working around the city or looking at people, how they use cars, I like that. Or just driving on the motorway and looking to different cars. 
you get uh, ideas, you get things coming to you, a little bit like water is coming into a sponge, and all that it has to be worked out in your brain, and then when you sit down to, to draw, uh, somehow this um, alchemy, it's, it's, it's working and then it goes into the paper. Um, sometimes, yes, you find uh, an object that maybe uh, inspires you especially, but it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite hard after to translate it to, uh, to a shape. So it's more a state of mind, it's more, um, let's say, your experience as a person, it's more the curiosity that you have to have to see um, things around, around you. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Good. Thanks, Alejandro. Now we turn to number five, Carlos from Spain. Good morning. Buenos días, Carlos. Adelante. Hola, Carlos. We cannot listen, Carlos. Carlos, can read you. I can read you. Ahora? Ahora sí. Ahora. Adelante, Buenos días. Carlos. Buenos días, Carlos. Que siendo la versión familiar, eh, ¿qué sistemas de seguridad destacaríais? Um, the safety uh, system or the safety um, items that we have on the ST actually are shared with the with the uh, five door. So we have a full range of airbags inside, and then there is no specific uh, security item on the car. It has all what the five door has, or the three door, all the airbags, and then same thing. Obviously, it has more overhang, so. I guess in, ca in, in case of a rear impact, you have more sheet metal to, to deform. But there is no specificity on that, on this team. OK. OK, so let's go now back to Germany with Moritz Nolte. Good morning, Moritz. Hola, and good morning from Germany. Yeah. Um, morning, Moritz. Our reader talk asks um, the car bodies of the Leon and the Seat Leon ST have many sharp edges. Is that going to look sporty? And how does the work in detail? Yes, actually the edges is uh, voluntary. Um, I think that a good design, or our philosophy is that a good design has to be an extremely simple object, well proportioned. This is very important, and then you can see in the le in the in the three Leonos, this is what uh, we have done. Beautiful proportions. This is like a human body it has to look good in the proportions, and then the suit or the clothes they have to, you know, so the style of the car or the clothes they have to suit properly. This uh, skeleton, this um, this architecture, yeah? this this human body. So this is the main thing. When we have these proportions, actually, we have to do what we call the the, the style of the car, and in Seat uh, we. Uh, voluntarily chose lines which are very sharp. Sharp because it shows precision, which is uh, one part of our DNA. We are part of the Volkswagen Group, and the precision, the quality, it's uh, one of our strongest points. But also, we want emotion. Uh, we believe that uh, seat metal uh, has to provide emotion, has to provide the the notion of movement, because automobile, like the word says, is automobile. So it has to move. It has to move even if it's standing still. We want to have this impression that the car uh, is going to be agile, is going to be nimble when it drives. So you can see actually that um, the car has very uh, soft surfaces between the lines. The seat metal has a strength uh, with the round shapes. But then you find the sharp lines that you are mentioned, like the tornado line or the blisters, this one with a triangle that is fading out. So it's like if you're throwing a stone, you will see a movement from front to back and disappears. So this is exactly what we're doing. We're doing sharp lines that show movement. And it, they show precision. I can tell you it has been extremely hard for designers and engineers, especially for our friends, for the engineers, to have this kind of sharpness, sharpness, which is absolutely outstanding, and you, it will be difficult to find around the motor show sharper lines than what we have in the Tole in the Leon today, and sharper corners. So, sharp lines with soft surfaces on good proportions. This is our language. Okay, thank you, Alejandro. 
good, Alejandro. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Now, last but not least, Yusef. Yusef come out from Hi. Spain. Hi. Bon dia, compañero. Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. Hola, Yusef. Uh, hola. <clears throat> okay, we're talking about design, but I like to go a little further. So, okay, I imagine I'm a next client, and I want to buy a family car, but everything I see is SUV. So I see you are uh, betting for a familiar car, a family car. Can you, or how can you convince me that uh, Leon ST is better or interesting or more interesting to me rather than an SUV? Okay, the ST or the station wagon as an architecture is a different animal of the SUV. Mm -hmm. SUV provides you space, of course, more a headroom and then bigger uh, ground clearance. And some of them, not all, they are also four-wheel drive. So it's a different, I would say, it's a different need. Uh, I really believe that uh, not everyone needs an SUV. SUVs are important, they are growing up. And as you know, uh, it's not a secret. We are also uh, working in projects on that kind, which uh, they, they will have to be decided. But uh, we really believe that there is a space for a really nice um, uh, station wagon for, a, let's say, a car that doesn't need to have uh, more space uh, than already an ST and a station wagon, which is a lot. People, not all the people, need a four-wheel drive. And then not everyone needs uh, or wants to be sitting higher up. Uh, so it's, um, I think it's complementary. There is nothing. Uh, wrong with the SUVs, it's nothing uh, wrong with the station wagons. I think that they are, then again, as I said, different animals that uh, live together. And uh, it's a question of choice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. <coughs> Alejandro, thanks a lot. Okay, uh, <coughs> gentlemen, uh, if any of you has another an additional questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we just run into the second part with uh, Dr. Michael Hint. Okay, good. So if there are no more questions to Alejandro, I'd like to say, Alejandro, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. For being here, for having answered all, all our guest Thank questions. You. And then now uh, we pass on the microphone to Dr. Michael Hines to talk about Thank technique, you. the second big word behind the new Leon ST. Dr. Michael Hines, good afternoon, my good friend and colleague. Dr. Michael Hines is the technical project manager at our technical center in Barcelona, in uh, headquarters in Martorell, back in Spain. Dr. Michael Haynes has a key role in the uh, mm -hmm. development of any project because he's the guy that looks after every single area of the development of the project. He is, uh, like I said, a key person, and I'd like him to introduce himself and explain you exactly what his job is. Michael. Go ahead, please. Thank you. A pleasure from my side being here and explaining you all the new details on the new Leon ST. Uh, to my person, as you can hear in my accent, I'm German, and that is no secret. I had my past at Volkswagen, and as an engineer, I moved over to Seat, where I am responsible for project management. Just to give you an idea, what is this guy talking about? It's like playing football to take a, um, just a different picture. If you imagine Alejandro, just is one aspect of the car. He is doing the design. I have an engine guy. There's a guy from electric. All those guys want to do the best car in the world. The problem is you have to do that together. And, of course, as a brand Seat, we have to be on a very um, yeah, interesting price and therefore you have to keep the money, the time and all those uh, lovely content, you have to get that together and to coordinate that and that is basically my role. But I'm here today to explain you more in detail uh, what is the story behind the ST. So I'm talking really about little things normally you would never see or in the catalog of course uh, I will talk a little bit about engines but just to give you an uh, idea uh, what is uh, the things we are doing at Materel. Talking Materel, uh, we have our own technical center, the head of uh, the technical engineering center is Dr. Matthias Rabe and we there really 
develop those cars. Uh, and we are, of course, uh, very proud. We are Spanish and we are German. So I will walk you from the front uh, to the back uh, with uh, little things. Uh, some of the things Alejandro mentioned, and I give you a little bit of the technical uh, content. So let's start with one of the uh, most beautiful headlamps in industry, which is LED uh, technology. And of course, it's not only the design, but one of the advantages is uh, that on LED light, uh, we are the first basically introducing, or we add, introduce this in the A segment, you have almost daylight. Yeah, so this is uh, very comfortable for your eyes driving at night. Uh, technical speaking, the, the light temperature is almost the same to daylight. Another point, and uh, what is the intention behind that, uh, that is the reduction of electrical energy. You basically can run those LEDs more or less 15% less uh, than a, a conventional bulb or even xenon. So, here you see a perfect idea. It's design and technical driven. Talking about uh, fuel consumption, and this is one of the things we are very proud on the Leon family, as Alejandro mentioned. Fuel efficiency is a package. Uh, yesterday I was asked, okay, what is the engine doing and all that. Basically, you have to optimize the car in every uh, part. You have to, of course, engine is one part, but we reduced um, the weight in this car, and we are one of the lightest car in the industry in this segment. Technically, how do we do that? Um, we use a lot of uh, warm pressed steel, basically, which is state of the art. So you can reduce the thickness with the same strength, and overall, that reduces uh, the weight, which is, and again, one of the uh, ideas of SEAT, drivability. Yeah, if you have a sporty, if you want to engineer a sporty car, you have to reduce weight. On the other hand, we are affordable, so I cannot walk all the aluminium and all the other concepts. So we really have to do a very smart engineering. This is just a little attention on the LED, but let's have a look. I will turn the car now. Another aspect of fuel efficiency. Yes, sir is, of course, uh, the air resistance. You can optimize the air resistance, and this was one of the questions. Why, uh, what is the big difference between a station and an SUV? One of the things that the car is lower, of course, so, so to reach uh, fuel efficient standards, it is much easier on this type of car. As Alejandro said, those are two animals basically living, uh, yeah, they have different ideas behind. Let's go back to fuel efficiency. One of the things you see here is an edge. You would say, hmm, what is this for? You see this part, basically, and this has a very high impact on fuel efficiency. I will just show the flow of air, my hand following, and here, basically, you make sure that the air goes up to the roof of the car, and that reduces uh, the, the pressure you basically build up on the front screen. This is just a little example. Another example, again, a compromise between design and technical engineering. If you look on this shape of this beautiful mirror, of course, we have the light. As uh, I said, light is important for SEAT. Yeah? We think light is one of the key elements a customer will see in the future. Of course, we have the light indicator here. But if you look on the shape of the mirror, it would look strange at the first glance. But Imagine, or the idea behind this, uh, the shape is just that way, that in case of rain, the water walks all the way up. So the customer has two effects. First of all, you don't have any rain on your side window, and uh, the aerodynamic resistance of the uh, mirror is also optimized. Another little detail, here's a gap. I know I'm now very detailed, but this really, again, reduces uh, the drag on the uh, mirror. So this is uh, the little details. Going now to the back of the car, I would go a little bit from the exterior, and I will talk a little bit also about the details in the interior. Alejandro stated, and uh, as 
he said, you know, it's a beautiful line, but from an engineering point of perspective, to build this in a tooling, um, you have to do many labs and engineering labs to find a way to do this in steel. If you take a piece of paper at home, uh, it's very simple. You just bend that and that's it. But this is one big tool. And in this tool, you have all those soft radiuses. And on the other hand, you have those sharp lines. And to engineer that, that is uh, one of the challenges. At the end of the day, and this is why I believe this is one of the most beautiful cars in the segment, is exactly this precision uh, we get into the car. Another element um, is safety. Uh, we were just talking about lightweight. Uh, lightweight also means you have to, uh, on the one hand, you build a very light car. On the other hand, you want to build a very safe car. Just to give you another example of this idea and how you engineer that, it's the A-pillar. The, the thickness of the A-pillar is one of the lowest uh, in, the, in this moment you can see. The one thing, basically, from a customer point of view, you don't want to have an A-pillar. It should be very thin. On the other hand, this is one of the key uh, structure elements in case of crash. So you have to be very precise in your design to ensure that the cage, basically, this part, um, yeah, keeps all the impact forces uh, through the A-pillar, B-pillar, and to the C-post. Again, a little example of the compromise we find to do a great design with all the technology uh, you demand today uh, from a customer point of view. Now let's have a look on the back of the car. Like in the front, uh, we have those beautiful uh, LED headlights. Um, little detail again here, you see this sharp line. Uh, this is not just because it looks great. It also has a huge impact on the uh, wind resistance on the car on the back. Because with a sharp line, uh, you know that from planes, uh, at the end, uh, you change the, uh, the air fluid, and therefore you can reduce um, the wind resistance on this car. Another point, um, what Alejandro also stated, is the big boot you have on the car. Um, comes with a double floor. We just can move this, very simple. And um, we just can show you. Imagine you go to IKEA, you have those big things. Uh, as a father of three kids, I know going to the beach, you know, sometimes you have to transport things and uh, surfboard, whatever, and this all fits into this car. Those are the elements, and this is what we see in SEAT. Uh, we are engineering and we are design, and of course, um, as we are a dynamic brand. Therefore, we offer a wide range of engines on this car. Uh, we will offer also CNG, a CNG uh, version of this car, and there's more to come. Um, panoramic uh, sunroof, we already mentioned, and there are also some assistant uh, systems, radar-based um, cruise control, uh, Fernlichtassistent, all, all the things uh, which are state-of-the-art uh, you can get as an option on uh, this beautiful car. So let's have a look in the interior. Basically, uh, what we see here um, is the connectivity uh, we offer at SEAT, as we believe uh, connectivity is one of the most important things we will see in the future. And therefore, um, this is one of the key elements uh, we see. Uh, on the other hand, what Alejandro also mentioned, clear lines, very sharp design, um, which basically leads us uh, to yeah, the, the brand values of our brand. One thing uh, we also um, 
have to say on, on our cars, uh, you can vary the seat position. Uh, the car is um, longer than the basically on. So uh, you have a lot of space in the back, uh, all kinds of uh, seating positions for really big guys, small guys, as my wife. Uh, so uh, this is the basic content. As we said, it's a family, and uh, it uh, started with the five-door, three-door, now this ST version. One detail, of course, this is Leon, but uh, we are very proud of that is the design and the uh, clarity. If you look on the um, door openers, this is the preciseness. Uh, we really, yeah, this is what we love at Seat. Finally, those are the things uh, on the ST, as I mentioned. Um, we offer a wide range of engines, CNG, and yeah, there will be more to come. One last thing, just uh, getting out of the car, uh, sound also is important for our young customers, and therefore, of course, with the sound system, uh, you get a really uh, great uh, package on this car. I think uh, those are the technical highlights I could continue, um, but I think uh, if we then walk, and Go back to the uh, Q&A um, from my side. I am happy to hear your questions and answer. Good, good, Michael. That's been good. I mean, let me tell you guys that I've been around for over 20 years. And uh, out of those uh, 22 years I've been around, nine I have spent them at the uh, R&D facility. So it's always nice for me right, to uh, listen to people talking about technical aspects of the car. Now, Michael, let's face the challenge of answering the questions of my uh, of our guest today. So, like I said before, we'll do it the other way around. We'll start with Giuseppe this time, and then uh, Moritz will follow. So, Giuseppe from <coughs> Spain, okay. Motor Passion. Please go ahead. Okay. Hola. I'd like to, to stop for a moment in the expression that you used and um, before you, Alejandro, used to that more to come. What is exactly more to come? Are we talking about uh, communication in between vehicles? For, for example, is uh, Leonis T thought in that line or? Yeah, uh, what I said, uh, we are talking as a family. Um, mm -hmm. I'm talking uh, more to come means uh, we will, um, I, I'm talking about engine range and of course uh, technical content. So uh, this is basically uh, the starting point now we are at, and uh, let's say it this way, uh, since uh, this is um, clear, uh, we will come up with interesting engine um, concepts uh, on this car also. Okay. Good, Michael, you said. Now Moritz from Germany, Automobile Block. Please go ahead. Hello to John. Yeah, hello Michael, erstmal. <laughs> hello Moritz. Um, <laughs> the next question uh, is uh, concerning uh, the kids. Um, uh, does the Seat Leon ST have special uh, child car seat preparation, ESOFIX? And another question, um, um, let me see where it is. Um, does side windows in the back have a kind of uh, squeeze protection yes. so the, the the children cannot hurt? Yes. Imagine I would come home with this car without this um, uh, pinch protection. My wife would kill me. So this, um, yeah, that the answer is of uh, course yes. And to give you an idea on Isofix, um, here basically you already see the Isofix. Um, there is a I'm, I'm just getting out of the way. Um, there you can see uh, the preparation on the ESOFIX. So, um, yeah, um, clearly this is uh, a children's car. And as a father, I can tell you one of the important things that you can block the window. So, basically, if the kids are uh, putting up the window up and down, you can block that as well. But honestly, this is uh, standard. Uh, this is nothing special or on the ST. Uh, this is simply state-of-the-art. Okay, thank you. Good. 
gentlemen. Now it's the turn to uh, turns go to Carlos Merodio from Ellas Conduces, Spain. Carlos, adelante. Hola, Carlos. Hola. Mira, además de cargar, de tener una capacidad de carga mayor frente al León, eh, ¿también gana espacio interior para sus ocupantes? Yeah, well, Ma yeah Michael, uh, Carlos is saying that apart from the uh, fact that the uh, León ST has a higher load capacity, uh, does the León ST uh, get a lot more interior uh, space and capacity as well? Yes. Um, uh, what we just said, the, the wheelbase is increased by this car and just, I give you an example, I'm now a small guy, but you can see very clearly um, this is more uh, than an average customer will need and the seating position is now in the middle. This is one of the ideas and as I already mentioned, the volume is 1,400 uh, and uh, seven liters, so uh, this is a, a, a big value for this kind of uh, sporty car. Good. Michael, thanks. So, the baton goes now to Jan Gleitzmann from Auto Drive, or Auto Art Guide for, uh, from Germany. Jan, please, go ahead. Yeah, hello. Hello. Uh, I have a very specific question from one of my readers. He's wondering, uh, the um, Leon ST comes with 17-inch uh, LO wheels. Um, is he able to put 19-inch on it, and what's the biggest size you can put on? Okay. Um, this, uh, to be precise, uh, I cannot answer this precise. Um, it depends. For example, if you have a snow chain, uh, chains, then you are limited, but uh, 19 is no problem, and uh, of course we will uh, offer in the uh, aftermarket or from uh, Seat Sport uh, bigger wheels even. The problem always is you have to uh, reduce the travel. Of course in a very sporty car, and if uh, you want to drive very sporty, uh, then you can uh, reduce the way of travel, but as uh, a car for all customers, uh, this is basically the limit uh, up to uh, 19 inch and in, in the yellow wheel, we start with uh, 16 inch wheels here. Okay, thank you. Good, Jan. Now Scott, Scott Fulton from Sayat Cupra, Sayat Cupra .net in the UK. Scott, your turn. Uh, hello. Hi Scott. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, just a question, I think it's been covered and, and say of announced that at some point there will be a four-wheel drive version of the ST coming. Do you have any more information on timescales for that? Well, uh, I said there's more to come. Uh, on that topic I will not uh, be very precise, but of course uh, we are part of the, and we are a proud part of the Volkswagen Group, and um, the things you basically see in the group, uh, we are always thinking, okay, how can we use this and utilize that? On the other hand, now let's start. Uh, we have already a wide range, and, and therefore, uh, that is basically it for today. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, Rui. Uh, Rui Augusto, Autoblog Portugal. Muy buenas. Adelante. Muy buenas. <laughs> as part of the Volkswagen Group and sharing many parts as the platform, and uh, what are the main arguments you would mention uh, to make someone choose between a Leon ST, between a VW Golf variant or a Scott Octavia combi? Mm -hmm. What do you think it, the main things that differentiate uh, those cars? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, one of the questions I like. Um, for why? Of course, we take the modules out uh, of the group, and this ensures quality. This is clear. If you look on a chassis, for example, we will not invent or develop a known axle because of quality reasons, of course, investment, engines, durability, and all those topics. But what we do as an engineering team, and we have all that, we have an own engine department and Seat and chassis department, this is the refining. That is what you would say, okay, uh, on the chassis, for example, you take different parts, but if you change the spring load, dampening rate, uh, the rubbers, you can totally change the behavior of a car. Yeah, if you do that bad, uh, okay, obviously uh, you're uh, doing something wrong, but at SEAT we have a long history 
on especially on the chassis department yeah we have thousands of uh, kilometers uh, we were running to adjust a Seat as a Seat so you will always drive a Seat is different than the Golf and uh, if you look for example all the entertainment thing we have a different concept yes we are using the same if you would say hardware but at the end of the day for the customer this is a different idea and and using different parts uh, gives the car a different character and that is at the end of the day we could reduce weight because some of the things are not in this car and, and therefore this is a different package so for me it's very clear golf is a golf and a Leon is a Leon uh, with very different um, directions and if you look uh, there are of course some compromises we did but we said okay as a said uh, this is the right compromise to do Good, Michael, that was quite clear. And then finally, last but not because of that, the least important, of <laughs> course, Eduardo Margiotta, Red uh, Life from Italy. Eduardo, adelante. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, Eduardo. Hi. We know that uh, in your group, uh, Audi is a key player in a high performance station wagon, for example, with the uh, RS6 Avant. But Leon ST is also a sport car, in particular with uh, certain engines. What kind of commitment is to combine the Seat sportiness on a family, ve on a family vehicle like uh, this one? Uh, as I said, in the range now we are up to 135 kilowatts. Uh, we are looking ahead and um, as I said, let's start with that what we are doing now because as the brand said, we have now built up to families. We have the Ibiza family and we have the Leon family and we started and uh, you can already get this car you know with 135 kilowatts which is impressive and with the weight it's a very dynamic car but you're right of course um, I'm engineer too mm, there's always uh, opportunity let's do it this way um, but uh, these are things uh, we have to discuss we have to check and uh, yeah, just start one step after the another. This is um, the idea behind the thing. Okay, Thank Michael, you. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, you guys as well. So is, there is still some time for you. If, feel free to uh, uh, ask another question or uh, make another comment if you like before we say uh, bye bye to Michael. Okay, I've got a technical question. Please, uh, you Except are, you said, you said. Perhaps I've got the data in the, in, in the catalog, but okay. <laughs> uh, it's about the front assist system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, with, what is the maximum speed that what uh, which the system uh, detects and prevents and they react okay. with the uh, radar? Basically, uh, the, it's a radar-based system. Um, the the problem on a, a radar uh, system is not the speed. It's uh, covered basically over the whole range. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, we basically cut then at a, a certain speed. Uh, but the the challenge for a, a radar-based system is not the top speed; it's always the lower speed because then you have the challenge. Uh, the distance gets very small, and mm -hmm. this is uh, the the critical thing. And that is why an uh, um, automotive or an automatic cruise system is so complex. Uh, and, and that is why we do a lot of accidents in the city because we think yeah, there's a distance of hmm. uh, two meters or three whatever and you can stop but from a technical point you cannot stop and since yeah. the AC system does this and does the measurement this is also from the technical point of view um, the, the challenge but this system goes down to zero so if you follow a car it stops this car will also stop this is basically the uh, improvement we see in the last years the first AC systems they stop more or less or they uh, said a message you know now the system is cancelled uh, depending on the um, um, the company at, at, at 30 mm -hmm. kilometers and less but so yeah. this is uh, clearly the future and uh, with the radar system this is not shown on this car but you will see that on all the automotive cars you will see a, a radar a detection mm -hmm. system in front of the car and and this is uh, basically the future because mm -hmm. with this you can do a lot of uh, things of course we have an a lane assist uh, system um, um this is a tired recognition system 
this is everything uh, we have on board. Okay, thank you. Good. Excellent, Michael. Anything else, guys? Can I just ask a quick question? Okay, please, Scott, go uh, ahead. Do you know, um, presumably you have an idea of, of which model in the models in the Leon family you expect to sell the most. Do you have a kind of order where do you think the ST is going to sell the most or the SC? Uh, I will not uh, say anything about uh, volumes here, clearly. Uh, but as I mentioned, the idea is if you look on the Ibiza, we are very successful and uh, we have uh, planned a significant amount on the ST because we believe uh, this is uh, a car which basically we missed on the Leon family and therefore, uh, depending on market, because uh, STs are very different in different markets. Uh, for example, Germany is a very strong market. Other countries are not, uh, how I would say that, interested in this kind. You sell them, um, but at the at the end of the day, uh, the customer uh, decides, and therefore we will see. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Dr. Michael Hinz, thank Guys, you very much. Thank you. Everybody. Nice talking to you. Right. You, uh, it's it's been too. a pleasure. Oh, pleasure Michael. talking to you guys. Thank you. Good. It's it's been a pleasure as usual, Mike. Always nice to have uh, Michael. Oh, we'll have always nice to have you here. So, uh, gentlemen, boys, uh, it's been great. It's been a pleasure for me to be here with you today to uh, talk about the new Leon ST, the new Leon ST for the company is a, an important an important milestone because as I said before the Leon is not a single car anymore it's a family of cars and then the Leon will be the second strong pillar we will develop this pillar strong because that will help us to achieve a sustainable future this car is about design this car is about technology and we've been with Alejandro Mesonero and Michael and Michael Hinz so I will take the words of them. The two of them have said there's more to come. I'd like you to stay tuned because there will be more to come. My pleasure to have you here with you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.